Hello everybody and welcome back into the Galactic Realm. This is your host, Jimmy, and I am bringing you another space game. No, it's not the Planet Crafter. It is Stellaris. Now this game's been out for a few years, and I have played it a good amount in that time. I've never actually beaten the game, and it's had a bunch of updates since I've last played. So, but I have really enjoyed playing the game. The exploration, the finding out things, um, the city, the planet building, your race um, that you are, the, um, oh god, what do you call these things? <laughs> uh, empires that you create. You can either start with a basic empire, or you can start your own new empire, whatever you want it to be, and you have values, ideals, worlds that you like, worlds that you don't like, different kinds of, um, you know, things like this. So basically it's a very customizable empire that you can make and you're going to be going against a bunch of different AI empires. Um, we are today going to create, do they still have my other one? I might just start that one and tell you about it. It doesn't look like it, so yeah, we're going to create a new empire in this first episode. So Stellaris, if you don't know what it is, it is a 4x um, space game basically. It is basically where you can create you explore you fight and other things like that and you build your empire it's so much fun um, so you're all gonna be in one galaxy together you're gonna start on one planet but you're gonna be in control of a like a system a little you know solar system area and then you're going to expand from there and see what happens you're gonna find story events you're gonna find other empires you're gonna have to deal with your population there's so much fun stuff so let's see what we want to be today there's so many different like races classes like video um different beings that you can be you can be robotics oh is this new oh i don't have the aquatics update okay i was like that's pretty cool looking right man okay okay good to know these guys are the most cutest ones ever not gonna lie about that. Or these little foxes who just look royal and regal. And that these little foxes that look royal and regal look just great. Um, or, yes. These unsuspecting geckos that never, ever try to be completely, like, destroy everybody. Apocalyptic. Can never trust the beautiful geckos at all. So, with that in mind, let's do it. We're going to be geckos. And then, for this, you're going to... You can either randomize your name, make a name. You can make a whole backstory if you wanted to. Wow. But let's randomize the name. The Besedons, I don't like it. Natraxi is pretty good. Mechpook. Tendrakians. Yes, we're Tendrakians, everybody. Let's go. Default does not matter. Indeterminable. Alrighty, because it does not matter. We're a bunch of geckos. Um, and then this is going to give you names. So depending on what you click on, like fungoids or whatever, you'll have different names for your leaders, your ships, and stuff. Humanoids are more human names, which, and then if you click on like fungus, globber lupin, you know, or avian, moon claw, it all just depends. We're reptilians, so, oh, there's lithoids as well, which are cool. Then we'll get into those another time. They use us each, uh, sorry, they use um, like rock minerals instead of uh, money for energy. It's very cool. Necroids, uh, where are the reptilians? Am I dumb? Oh, uh, it's ABC order. Like these names, though. Zildor Ziza. The reptilians are killing me with these names. Huskbrim Mazak. No, we're doing two. We're doing this one. Alright, so for this part, you get trait points. And each trait point costs you, or each trait costs you a certain number of points. Like, you only have two points that you can pick total. You can make five picks, but you can only have a total of two, which isn't great, but it isn't bad. It's a, But these are 
definitely going to be the building blocks for the type of gameplay that you want to do. So agrarian is um, you basically get food from jobs is plus 15%. Food is good. You got to keep your populace fed. Ingenious, which also costs two. Energy credits from jobs are up by 15. So you'll get more money, which means you can actually do things, <laughs> which is quite nice. Industrious, you get more minerals. Intelligent, which is like one of the ones I do like because it's nice. Um, it's a nice base across the board. 10% from jobs, which are actually different than your main people that are doing the research. You can have populists that are like scientists doing this, so it's not as good as what I know, or it doesn't match up to my style of play as you would think. Thrifty, you get more trade value. And then, you know, I'm just going through these basically. Um, or you could select, see how this is intelligence too, or you can select each one and get 15 instead of 10% from each, but they're one each. There are some that are negative. Like, how am I supposed to get extremely adaptive, which is 20% habitability, which is huge, which means you can almost have it inhabit any world, even if it's not your base world. So in this game, whatever base world you have is what you're primarily going to be looking for to settle later on. Because not all worlds are habitable to you. If you're a continental world, you might not be a frozen world or a tomb world. Or in a, or a water world, stuff like that. So, but you can actually increase your habitability and you'll be able to adapt better. But it's four points. How am I supposed to do anything? Well, guess what? There are negative traits too, like non adaptive, slow breeders, which is not something I'd, I would take. Pop growth speed, you don't want to have that slowed down. It can really drag your game down. Rapid breeders. Talented. I love talented and quick learners. So that I have really my leaders, which there's going to be each leader. One's going to be like a science leader. One's going to be a military leader. They can learn quicker, get more experience, and they get more levels. Like there's a cap normally. This increases their cap, and there's other things in the game that can also increase their cap. So I do love the talented quick learners kind of thing. Never go with slow learners. Traditional, if you want more unity, which is super important, unless they made changes. Like, Unity gets you to your um, next, I don't even know what to call it, technology tree? Not technology tree. I'll show it to you when we get in the game next episode. <sighs> um, tradition's nice. Quarrelsome if we don't want to be docile. Our, um... Easy to manage, not bad. I think that's new. You'd be very strong, so if you're wanting to go for like a militaristic playthrough, because you have to conquer a planet by sending in an army there, and depending on your strength of the army is depending on if you can get the planet. So that's uh, that's that. You could get very strong if you wanted to do that kind of stuff. Also, it gives you resource output, which is nice. Um. Nomadic, you can it is nice because you can resettle for less because it does cost a lot to resettle. Um, sedentary, growth from immigration, resettlement cost, no. Solitary is not bad though. It's just a little bit annoying with the pop housing usage. <laughs> uh, amenities, you need amenities to keep people happy and that they don't rebel and start you know fighting with each other. Governing attraction. So if you're conformist, then basically you're going to be together. You're not going to worry about having different faction, factions having to please. Whereas deviance is the exact opposite. Everyone's going to try and do their own thing. Enduring is nice. I need my leader life starts. I personally love to play with high-level, long-lived leaders. So I usually go with an enduring. And talented, quick learners. Now, oh no, I, I need to make another pick because I have negative one. I can't have negative one. It has to be zero. Um, so I do have to take a not great trait. Decadent. I wouldn't do it. Um, wasteful. The consumer goods upkeep, we can manage. We definitely can manage that. And oh, yes, you can't actually do these because you're this. You can't be the same thing. You can't be fleeting and also enduring. <laughs>
Uh, 20 years is a good long time. I think I'm going to go with Wasteful. We can manage that. And look, now we're set. And our home world is going to be called... Leras in the Karus star system. And so, do we want a dry, a wet, or a frozen starting location? I like... Me, personally, I, I don't mind the wet at all. I think I'm going to go with the tropical world, though, which is humid, rocky world with a thick nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. Seasons with significant precip precipitation are interchanged with drier periods. Most land masses are covered in dense vegetation, which is where I would find these reptiles, usually. So I think that, that fits beautifully. Tropical world, Leras. And then each one has a different background. These don't actually do anything. They're just uh, backgrounds. We're going to go Reptilian City. And then this is also some one of their updates that they added. In the beginning, original, this was not here. So we get to choose an origin for our species. Rather than when it was first around and you would just, you were, you evolved and you developed space travel and now you're taking your first travel into the hyperspace lanes. What are these? Nemesis and Overlord I don't have? Necroids Oracle. Gosh, I need to get more DLC, but that's fine. For this, it does not matter. Oh my god, they added a ton more. There was only like eight before. Oh my god. Oh, these are all with the other ones? DLC stuff. Oh man. I'm going to have to look through these with you guys now because I don't know all these. Clone Army, a species of short lived and inner infertile soldier clones, is exceptionally proficient in matters of war. So that's something you might want to do if you're like going for the war war lost colony civilization originated originated as a lost and forgotten colony separated from its home world long ago the struggling colonists endured many hardships before they were able to build up the necessary technological and industrial base that would allow for a return to space and this is just an advanced empire of this species is spawned somewhere in the galaxy interesting that's really interesting. I don't know if we're going to play that one, but that's interesting. Doomsday. It's highly unstable, and it's only a matter of time before it explodes. Their only hope is to seek refuge elsewhere. Warning. Challenging origin. Oh! 35 to 45 years after the game starts. Valuable resources from the Doom planet's mantle boost production on the surface. No guaranteed habitable worlds will spawn. Oh, wow. That is a challenge. What is this? Um, the civilization established early contact with their immediate alien neighbors. Gradually, over the span of the century, they masterminded the birth of an interstellar union in which they would have a dominant role. Okay, so you're the head of a faction. And members are guard. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Common ground. This one is a Galactic Union Federation. I like this one. On the shoulders of giants myself. I think that's a cool one. You get an archaeological site related to a mysterious benefactor in your home system. Sometimes you can't find these in your home system and you got to expand. I love archaeological sites. They're fun because you don't know what you're going to get with them and they can be really powerful for you. Those are great. Um, let me look at Tree of Life here. Symbiotic with a vast tree. Many benefits, but it's lost with crippled them. Hive Mind. I can't do this because I don't have Hive Mind authority. Though we could become a Hive Mind. We haven't got to that point yet. Hmm. They're more expensive, but will provide new plants with their own sapling. Okay. Hmm. Galactic doorstep. This is another one I like with the gateways. Start with a dormant gateway in your home system. Okay. Those say, uh, yeah, Scion. Start as a vassal of a fallen empire, which has its benefits and doubts, because you could, you're not really your own self. You have to do exactly, not exactly, but things that your fallen empire wants you to do but you are protected by them and they are the most powerful um in the game you know empire in the game what is void dwellers home in space as long as it's maintained records life in a typical planetary environment is anathema to them they live on three orbital habitat okay interesting orbital habitats 
Oh, and habitat, you can't really, yeah. You're not able to inhabit, like, really any planets. That's very interesting. Shattered Ring. Ring world built by unknown forerunners. If it can be understood and fully repaired, it will grant them a great power. That's very cool, too. I, as I have played mul multiple times through, I've never actually finished the game, which is kind of sad. <laughs> Uh, but you can only have ring worlds. Remnants is cool too. You have a relic world, which is a size 22, which is really big. And you're trying to reclaim your lost glory. That's pretty cool. Life seeded. Home world is guy, which is the perfect world. 30 size. And it has all the right biomes that you would like. Rare planetary features. It's beautiful. This is always something nice to take for a basic first time run through I would definitely say life seated is where you want to be but I'm not sure yeah yes and no 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 because of this it's only Gaia worlds there's not very many Gaia worlds out there so this is a fun seed because you can get some great worlds out of it but if you're looking for many habitable world many habitable worlds this is not what I would prefer for you so I think we're going to do On the Shoulders of Giants for the archaeological site. So we have more worlds to inhabit. Okay, and then also now what kind of ethics will we have? Will we be a, high, a gestalt consciousness? Which we can't be democratic all the None. Our rulers are immortal and happiness <laughs> is not affected. That's pretty cool. But yeah, you don't get a tutorial. Um, it's interesting. There's pacifist, which basically you're better with stability, which is important for your whole, your planets as they get bigger. Um, that's cool. The Empire size. Um, materialist. I like fanatic materialist because of research speed. But it's you know, and then if you want like robots to help you out by or creating a robots, which is pretty cool. Um, spiritualist, which is actually really good because of the unity and edicts thing. You always want to, or I always like the spiritualist category. Xenophiles, you love everybody. <laughs> so you can't enslave people or displace them. There are, you know, pros and cons to everything. Authoritarian, monthly influence, which is super important. But you can actually, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Um, get more resource output, which is nice. Egalitarian is really cool because it's got the unities want to stay the same. And if you have specialist pops like scientists and culture people, they give more resources. Uh, xenophobes, you get starbase influence costs are reduced and because you don't want anybody to mess with your territory. And you don't want to really be friends with anyone, even though you could. Make better empires if you have friends. Militarist. Militarist. You know, everyone knows that. Um, yeah. So I think we're going to be some sort of spiritualist. Because I like the monthly unity. So you have three points left, right? Each of the blue is one point. Each of the orange is two points. I think I'm also going to be a fanatic. Um, oh. Oh. That's right, you can't be a materialist and a spiritualist. So you, anything that's across from each other, you can't be because they, they don't work together. So then we need to know, do we want research speed or do you want unity? I want unity, even though I love this. So we're going to be a spiritualist. Egalitarian's also quite nice. But it's not as good as it used to be. But it does allow utopian living standards. And then we can uh, xenophobes, which is nice for starbase cost. <sighs> Maybe authoritarian, spiritualist, authoritarian, and e I can't be egalitarian. No, but you can be xenophobes. Hmm. Mm. 
pacifist. Authoritarian pacifist. Yeah. Spiritualist, authoritarian pacifist. Interesting. But I like the benefits of these. I really do. It's interesting. We'll take it. And we cannot be democratic because we're authoritarian. But that's okay. Democratic gives you automatic resettlement chance at 50%, which is really high, honestly. But then your leader changes every 10 years, which is actually quite a lot. Um, 20 years. Faction unity. Not bad. Um, dictatorial empire size effect. So you'll get negative effects if your empire is too big at certain points. Uh, max influence from power projection. Hmm. Influence. Or corporate. Yes, yeah, so you can even be a corporation, which is hilarious. <laughs> and you can, like... Um, oh, what's that? Sorry. All right. Basically, <laughs> you can put your open up shops and stuff on other people's empires and make money off of them. <laughs> it's hilarious, but we're actually, I think we're going to go with Oligar. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that for the Faction Unity game. We're going to be oligarchs. Now, that's just for ethics and what kind of, you know, we're a theocratic oligarchy. Oh my god, are we America? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, now you can pick your civics, which is, you got two picks. So this is why this video is just going to be us creating our empire, because it takes so much detail, and I love this part of the game, just setting it up. Um, let's see here. Agrarian ideal, your generator, mining, and agriculture districts. One more housing is nice. Sorry. My nose is being stupid right now. Um, do, 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 aristocratic elite, capital buildings, repair, replace some politician jobs with nobles. Not worried about that. Catalytic processing replaces metallurgists with catalytic techno. Food and alloys. Interesting. Um, waves all unity calls for pop resettlement. That's not bad. Cutthroat politics, diplomatic core. Hmm, this is not bad. Efficient bureaucracy. Environmentalist. Um, so that actually would go well with the one that we did before, because I believe in our consumer goods uh, trait were wasteful, which is pop consumer goods upkeep plus 10%. But as I said, you can balance that out. If we're environmentalist it's minus 20% so we're actually minus 10% which is great we just negative you know cut that out now we still have other stuff like functional architecture is really good because building slots are nice and the cost of building being down is really good um, what else do we have merchant guilds um, meritocracy Level cap is also, see, another thing that I could do for level cap for my leaders. Um, mining guild. Pleasure seekers. What? For spiritualist pacifist, I don't know about this. Allows decadent lifestyle living standard under which all affected pops have increased happiness and consumer goods upkeep. Pop growth from entertainers plus 1%. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, another time, but that's funny. That's new, too. That happens in Shadow Council. Oh, jeez. Okay. Slaver guilds. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to go with functional architecture and environmentalist. I think this is going to work out really well for us. Okay. These are also just... Um, this is the voiceover. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. The weak gun. A strong rule. There's that. Do not be afraid to exercise your individual right to free thought. Please take a moment now to practice. <laughs> uh, spiritualist. Thinking machines are an affront to nature. These profane constructs must never be allowed to. Oh, wait. <laughs> the only way to make peace with others is to make peace with yourself. Yeah, I think we're going to go with, um... Whoa! 
<laughs> what is <laughs> Oh Jesus they they updated the voice acting to this too channel is now under military control obey all instructions transmitted here and report any insurgent activity to the nearest occupation officer That's funny to oh my is to consume Automation open access this is so much better. I love this so much. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Nothing is impossible to those who would try. The blind masses must be led down a path of reason. Yes. Just because we're also spiritualist, I, I love it. Let's go, technocrat! Ah! Oh my god, our empire name. The Tind Unified Domains. The Holy Tindrakian Sovereignty. United Tindrakian Systems. Yep, that's it right there. And now we get to choose our flag, our colors, our little, you know, thing here. Ugh. Our symbol of stuff. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, 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 um. Like, I love all this stuff. It's so nice. Um, corporate, maybe? No. Blocky? Let's see here. I don't like the green though. I'm gonna have a. Can I do blue? Okay, that's too dark of a blue, I think. Oh no, oh jeez. Uh, secondary color, can we make it like black? That's nice. Um. What do we want for this? Um. That. We're not aquatic. I mean, we're aquatic. Is we are aquatic. I'm like we're not aquatic, but we really are aquatic. Um, hmm. But it really doesn't matter. I'm not a big fan of any of those. I mean, that's just pretty standard stuff. Imperial. If you want to be like you know, blah, legion. Domination. I like this. Yeah. Um. Oh wait, what do we want to have for the? Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. I don't like that as much. Hmm. Yeah, they've added so much fun stuff. Okay. Yeah, that that's cool right there. I'll take that. Okay. Next, we want reptilian ships. We're not mammals. Corvette. Destroyer. Cruiser. Battleships. Titan ships. Oh my gosh. Construction. Colony. Okay, this is just what our ships are going to look like. That's cool. Oh, nice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is cool. There's a lot of more ships that I hadn't got to because I haven't gone that far in. Um, our leader's name. Koth. Kothaxir. No. Raxor. Yeah. That's fine. Female leader. Look, we can do color variants too. Aww. I think the green's fine. What kind of room do we want? Oh, jeez. This is good. All right. I think we've got it, everybody. So this here is the United Tendrakian Systems. This is going to be a fun playthrough. We're environment, we're functional architecture, authoritarian, pacifist, spiritualist, enduring, talented, quick learners, wasteful, theocratic oligarchy. Thank you all so much for watching this video.
I appreciate each and every one of you. Please don't forget to like the video or dislike it. Share it with your friends. Subscribe. It's very easy for you. Free for you. Great for me and good for you. And yeah, thank you so much. Take care. This is your host of the Galactic Realm, Jimmy Out. Love y'all. Bye.